This is the 20th season of Bass Talk Live. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Strike King Lures, Aftco, Pro Guide Batteries, Pro, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Beatdown Outdoors, and Sunline. BTL, coming at you. Good morning, and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where we are going to talk bass fishing. Uh, we got a lot of derbies going on this week at the top level. The Bass Pro Tour, I believe it is the third stage already. Uh, kicking off in Tennessee on Dale Hollow, so it'll be very interesting to see uh, once that gets to the uh, portion of the event that is live streamed, uh, whether those guys are catching largemouth or smallmouth. Also, some weather rolling into Florida that should make for a very interesting uh, Harris chain. But it is April, and there is no fishing to watch right now. So last night I was on uh, Smallmouth Crush, the live stream that he does uh, every week. And every time I just kind of regret the decision, but Hey, I do it and it's fun. So he's like, Hey dude, I'm going to be fishing. I'm going to be on the water. And I said, so let's do some live fishing. So this is actually a live stream that you're looking at Travis who is in can well explain legally how you can be fishing for smallmouth and why it's not a perfect stream, but we've got live fishing now, Travis. Right. So I'm actually up in Canada, Canadian waters up here on Lake Ontario right now. And uh, the reason is because New York actually has a closed season for basically six months of the year. So we have to take advantage of uh, the Canadian fishery this time of the year. I got you. So I would just assume early April, I guess, are we talking like an unseasonably warm spring? Or is this pretty typical that you're able to get out on the Canadian side in early April to smallmouth fish? No, this is actually pretty typical. We had a, a mild winter, yes, but it's been cool. Water temps right now are 44 degrees. This is really my first day bass fishing this year. I've been doing a lot of other species. And so uh, it's nice to get out, but right now I don't know if these fish are quite set up where I want them. I'm pretty shallow. Right now I'm in uh, less than 10 feet of water. And I think we're just a little bit early, but I think we can find a few fish around here. Are you throwing a little swim bait on them? No, I'm actually uh, throwing a little, uh, it's called the Beast Coast Sniper Jig. I'm throwing a sniper jig with a little net on the back. And then uh, I actually did catch a fish earlier today on the uh, Great Lakes Finesse underspin with the drop minnow on the back. I got you. Uh, can you, so let's do a little education here. Can you run through that jig? Sure. Because I feel like that has been probably one of the hottest baits up North in bass fishing over the past two years. And I don't know if anyone's actually, uh, I think we see it in the tournament recaps and the pictures, but are you cool with running through that actual jig? Yeah. So I actually helped design this jig. We used to fish a, a similar jig. Uh, back in Wisconsin growing up and it's just really uh, a small one they make a quarter three and a half pounds and it's pretty limited skirt material oh. wherever you were you before you got to go back there Travis ah you're you're cracking up on me I mean you look like uh you look like a uh, there's a podcast called blurry creatures have you heard of that one it's a uh, it's uh it's about yeah, no, you look like a blurry creature right now. Where were you when you started? Uh -oh. Are you drifting? Is my audio okay? Yeah, your audio is kind of okay. Along, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, well let's try now this. Now. We'll get into a better. Get we'll into get a, a better, better spot deal. for you. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, talk that. Walk through that jig again. Uh, just, just talk us through sure. what makes it so special. Yep. So it comes in three different sizes, and really. The jig trailer is what's the key because there's really not a whole lot of there's no leader. You would fish it just like you would a tube and certainly fish okay. the same areas that you would fish a tube. 
uh, with that jig. And I'm just crawling along. We do a lot of drifting uh, as well with it up here on the St. Lawrence River. And we actually do a lot of feet old, finding fish on your electronics and throwing that jig to them. In fact, last year, it really outproduced the drop shot many days uh, for me. It kind of, kind of took the place of a drop shot. Are there guys that are doing this outside of the Great Lakes, or is this kind of a Great Lakes exclusive technique? No. No, it's actually oh, this boy. jig. A little different. You got me now? Eh, not on, really. Internet. I could kind of, I could kind of. Really? All right, let me keep going. Yeah, we got you. Are you headed towards like the mainland or are you headed towards like the abyss? I'm in the abyss, man. I'm, this is all you can see right now. These are all islands around me. So, okay. So, I'm yeah. impressed that we're or, able to have, uh, we're definitely able offshore. To have that. No, um, are guys throwing that jig not on the Great Lakes? Because I've got a bunch of them and it always looks like it'd be uh, like a good spotted bass jig. Yeah, absolutely. Guys are, are catching spots with it. Even largemouth. It's a great jig for largemouth fishing. Really excels in that clear water. Um, but I would not be afraid to have this tied on. And, and don't be afraid. You know, it's a little different than some of the jigs on the market. It's really a, a finesse jig, and it has put a lot of fish in the boat for us. The key and you to fish that year-round. That's what we got to do today. So what are you looking to find? Oh, yeah, what are they doing sure. right now? Are they still in winter? Are they moving up? Because you said you're in shallow water, but where exactly, what stage are these fish in? Definitely pre-spawn, and they have not moved up shallow in numbers. It's a different ball game when you got to go deep right now uh, and try to locate them. I don't have a whole lot of experience, you know, this time of the year, uh, fishing for them deep where they'd be winter, simply because our seasons close. Um Mm -hmm. And so we don't really get a chance uh, to fish into the late fall because the season does close. I have ideas where they live, where they winter, but this should really be uh, one of the first stops. Uh, once they kind of get out of their winter deal, they're going to start moving shallow to feed, warm up, as well as uh, start spawning. And they'll start spawning here within the next month, I, I assume. It, it could heat up and we could find some fish on beds. Within yeah, the next uh, Sean days. Travis is not breaking the law. He's actually in Canada uh, right now fishing in Canada. Everything he's doing is completely legal. You still there? Find a few. This bay here. Yeah. Nope. Bay here that I'm fishing just has some scattered rock. I got you. A uh, couple questions as to why a spinning rod instead of a casting rod with the jig. Sure. It's just a quarter ounce that I'm throwing, and I prefer a spinning rod over a bait caster. It is a lot of fun to jack on them, obviously, with a bait caster, but uh, for some reason, a spinning rod just comes natural to me, and I really like it, especially if I'm throwing a quarter ounce. If I'm going to go up to a three-eighths or a half, and I'm dragging and stuff like that, you'll see me pick up a bait caster. But I basically have light braid, five-pound braid to an eight-pound fluorocarbon leader. And I'm just kind of working it along here. But Oh, wherever you are, just stay right there. It's unbelievable right now. I mean, okay. it looks like HD right now. Well, let's hope there's some fish right here. Oh, well, it was clear That's for the a second. All right, just so... One of the things that I wanted to talk with you about is the Elite Series, uh, Major League Fishing, St. Lawrence River, Thousand Islands, depending on you know where they're taken out of. There's about a 50-mile stretch from Clayton all the way down to what? Where's Where does Messina? Right, Messina, yep. And, yep. and you're a full-time guide on the river. You just moved up there full-time. You spent, what would you say, the last eight years pretty much, over 100 days? Pretty much every legal day you can Absolutely. be on the river, you're on the river. Uh, I'm out here about, quite a bit. I do about 120 trips. So talk about that system. We hear some people, I've heard some things to where like, hey, there's a lot of pressure that's getting to it. In your mind, 
how is the system how healthy is that system what does the future look like for bass fishing on ontario and the st lawrence river it's it's extremely healthy as far as pressure i mean about it, i honestly see it you're not the pressure that you would think um obviously if you go down south you know lake gundersville right now that's pressure even some of the other great lakes like door county in wisconsin sturgeon bay that's pressure it's rare to see more than eight ten boats at a ramp up here mm -hmm. we rarely see boats when we're when we're fishing i mean there's today i'm surprised there's actually two bass boats in here with me today but eh, i just don't see it like like you do around other parts of the country And the future uh, of that, like, are you still seeing a lot of, of smaller fish or, I mean, are you seeing generation fish coming up? Like you catching a bunch of eight, 10, 12, 14 inch smallmouth? Uh, definitely. There's, there's large schools of healthy population of, of smaller bass. We typically will run into those fish. If you get anywhere out on the main lake in the summertime and you're in 15 feet or less, uh, you can catch those, you know, two pounders all day long, but you can eff pretty effectively target those larger fish consistently and not have to worry about those smaller fish. Uh, they do group together quite a bit. Um, but like I said, you'll come across major schools of those two, two and a half pounders as well. But there's also just some giants out here. You know, it used to be 22 pounds was a good bag in a one day tournament. You had a shot. It seems like you have to have 25 plus. Mm -hmm. And you had how many 25 plus? Yeah. I mean, everything takes over 25 to win up there now, doesn't it? It does for the most part. Regardless you might of have whether a, it's. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, a couple questions about that jig. What are your options uh, as a trailer on it? Sure. I really like some sort of Ned rig on the back of it. It seems to outproduce any type of craw, any type of other trailer. But that's not to say I'm not going to just, you know, put other other trailers on it. I, I certainly like a twin tail grub if I'm dragging. But really, just a Ned and, uh, you know, pick your brand that you like. I use, obviously, the Z-Man TRD. I also like the uh, the little, little General uh, as a trailer. So and zero can, action whatsoever. It's just a small compact package. Yeah. Ooh, finally. We hooked up? We are. I'm so glad they're in here. Travis so hooked the, up on BTL. The, water, the water's a little dirtier. This ain't that big. Three and a half, maybe four. Nah, it's not even. Going for the scoop at the front of the boat. I'm trying. There we go. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. He's decent. He looks cold. cold. He is cold, man. He is cold. What was he doing out in the middle of nowhere, though? That's the thing. Uh, Run through that rod reel set up the whole nine yards. Nick was asking. Sure. Or no, yeah. uh, Sean was asking about it. Well, the reel's a Shimano Vanford. I like the 3000 series, just a bigger spool. It's got a good uh, gear ratio on it. The rod's a St. Croix Legend X. It's an awesome blank. It's very sensitive, seven foot, medium fast. And I got five pound Cortland Master Braid with that eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Is five. That oh, that was a bite, wasn't it? I stalled. That was 100% a bite. What are these fish doing out here? What are they on? Sand. Oh, there's some rock gonna, out there. I was going to say sand, but there, I guess there is a little rock. That doesn't mess the spot up by going up to get it. Well, my hope is that there's fish all over in here, but you never know. I just want to get this back and try to make another cast in here. But you said you said five on the braid. Is that like a little bit? Is I mean, is that what is the diameter on that? Like dental floss? Yes, yes, it really is. But here's what here's why I like that that real thin diameter. 
I think you get a lot of distance. You get easy that five pound braid on pretty much any. Man, there's a lot of rock here. On pretty much any of my uh, finesse plastics, I'm going to throw for smallmouth. Whether I'm throwing the swim jig or a swim bait, I'm sorry, or some type of finesse, uh, you know, hair jig. But then anything I'm dragging on the bottom, Ned Rig, Drop Shot, all that, it's typically going to be five pound braid. Stuff's pretty strong. You're not going to break it. but uh, And when you're drop shotting deep as well, I just feel like that five pound diameter, mm -hmm. it just gets down to the fish much faster. So what makes, in your opinion, a good or a talented uh, Great Lakes smallmouth angler? Like if I you were you to have, have like three or four different characteristics that good Great Lakes anglers have. Man, well, I think it's being comfortable fishing ultra clear water. Really what it is, it's it's time on the water. That's what's going to make you good out here. I know that's what everybody says, but... It's really true. It comes with, because every day is so much different. These fish will position themselves different. Uh, typically, the same type of techniques will work, but you got to be able to locate active fish, and you can't be afraid to make a move. If, if you're not getting bites, you got to get out of there. I mean, a smallmouth, if you're around smallmouth, they're typically going to bite. Um, and it, it can be so special. You can literally fish an area like I am here without a whole lot of luck. I can make a run, you know, a half a mile over there, and, and they could be loaded up. So it's just a matter of constantly being you – know, I don't spend a whole lot of time in one spot unless I have a lot of history with that area or I know there's fish there. I have to be confident that I'm around fish um, in order to stay. And obviously with today's electronics, that allows you to do that. It's so much more efficient to cover water now uh, with this technology where – Back in the day, especially with 2D, you would literally have to zigzag around in places and, and pull up to pieces of structure and, you know, blind cast and hope. And now you can just literally go over there and see if there's a few fish hanging out and, uh, you know, enjoy your time on the water and, you know, set the hook a lot more. Now, it seems like you're not really dialed into your electronics like you're actually just kind of fan casting like you're not casting two specific yeah. fish you seem like you're kind of just fishing an area yeah so i i run a a, a live scope on the trolling motor as well uh, as a pole here and um i use it a lot but today no i'm just kind of blind casting i'll see some fish on the grass uh when i do here and i'll cast to them but um there's a fish He'll within back. 20 feet he's gonna go over there and grab it okay so even I in this cold water and pre-spawn okay yeah but in the cold water and pre-spawn they're still going to have a what what would you say a small mouse bite window is like range like on the great lakes and then like in the current and like how close do you have to get that bait to them Oh, I would say, I would say if you're in 10 feet or less, I think if you're within 20 feet and that fish notices it, he's going to come over there to investigate it. That's so, a massive bite window. Yeah. Yeah. You just literally when you're covering water shallow, you're just slinging baits. I could be throwing a drop shot. I would just shake it a little bit, keep it in place and then reel up and make another random cast out this way. Um, Mm -hmm. If you if you drop it around the fish, he's gonna come and grab it. Are you a fan yeah, of the major is. circuits coming up to Thousand Islands every single year? Um, hmm. that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I prefer they didn't. Really, even Unless as a guide, was... you don't want to highlight it where people go, "Holy cow, I want to get some of that," and then book you. Well, you know, the top, the consistent guys that are on the elites that fish up here and, and do well mm -hmm. uh, with the live coverage and stuff, there's a lot that's uh, exposed. Ignored. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is fine. But uh, 
there's there's no secrets out here anymore you know uh, are there new areas that these fish use or do they use the same areas year after year after year even with the pressure do you think there's unfound untapped areas mm -hmm. or is it pretty much they live in certain areas and i'm mainly talking about the lake now uh and yep. then there's just massive dead zones well, there's definitely dead zones and there's definitely new areas to explore, right? Maybe not uh, major spots, but definitely select things like big boulders, things like that. You know, for me, there's a lot of, I, I, I fish a lot of random little pieces of structure versus a massive area, especially in the summer months. Um, I'm just kind of going, and again, it comes with this, that comes with time on motor idling and marking those those rocks any type of transition uh that's what you're kind of mm -hmm. looking for out here you really want to find something different that's what those fish are going to relate to and really does it be a sand flat it could be a weed we got grass out here believe it or not boulder piles gravel rock with veins running through it any type of transition is what you're really looking for i got you when you it's a started shame using this, the floor, air... go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was saying I was it's a shame that when uh... you started fishing the. Oh, good lord! Now we're on top of each other again. All right, have at it. I was just <laughs> saying it's a shame that these. Uh, 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 it, we're probably a week away from every cast. Uh, it can be every cast. It definitely can be every cast. And this time of year, you know, a five pound bag used to be special. And I, I mean, I've got, you know how it is on the internet. I'll post how I caught a 30 pound bag in the springtime and I'll get some guy, you know, well, that's not even, that's not even, like people, like, 33 plus is kind of like the new goal here this time of year. Like that's the bad. 33 plus. Yeah, that's, I mean, I was, I'm happy with a 30 pound bag, but oh, this is the time for giants. You know, we, we got basically this season's going to close on May 10th. So we have between now and May 10th to probably catch some of the biggest smallmouth of the year and have some of the best fishing uh, folks if just are um, tuning in and catching well, up I'll, what we're dealing I'll with go. here is we have we have uh travis manson live in canadian waters fishing for gigantic smallmouth so yeah i'm just explaining that you are in uh canadian waters you're in canada <laughs> with a, a a sketchy cell signal trying to catch giant smallmouth on uh lake ontario so that is why we have what we have so yeah, it's correct. not like he can he can travel around to where the good service is legally he can only fish in certain areas and then we also want a, a chance to catch one so he did did catch a uh about a four pounder about 10 minutes ago but just kind of plying the waters uh what when does your guide stuff really uh ramp up we had jp in i know there's some btl listeners that have uh that have booked with jp uh you kind of got him into the the guiding game through the smallmouth crush that's that's what you do so when does that kind of ramp up uh as far as getting people in the boat to catch these things so so my first trip on the books is april 20th so uh you know a couple of weeks Ten away days here. from now Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So basically April 20th through May 10th, I'll be on the water every day guiding. And then I get a little break because the season closes and it won't open up until June. Okay. June. Oh, I think we finally got deep enough into Hopefully Canada can where we me. lost it. Oh no, you just came back. So we we are talking about June. I think we're approaching like five minutes. If we can get five more minutes out of you, Travis, we can do thirty minutes of live fishing, and I think we're going to call that good. 
That's fair. That's fair. We tried. What's that? Yeah. Oh no. Oh, that was good. I think I would love to do this again when you are uh, when you are dialed in on a better signal. It was all right. We might try. get you for we might get you for twenty more seconds. Can we get you to to uh, to peace out here? You know what? He's done. It was worth a shot. All right, guys, we tried that. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. That is the, uh, yep, and then he's out. That is the joys of trying to go live from the water. So uh, Dale Hollow, actually a little bit tough right now. If you look at a, a group A right now, Michael Neal uh, leading the way uh, for fish for 12 pounds. So uh, we're going to try to do that more this year is to get on some live stuff and have some guys from the water focus on a little bit of techniques, tactics, strategy, where they can actually show how it's going down. Uh, there's a lot of guys, you know, with the earbuds and the cell phones now that you can just hop on and talk about that. I do also, uh, before we get out of here, uh, I'm taking the cat up to the bass tank uh, to get, tweaked i'm gonna jump in the boat with scott and he's gonna dial me in uh on some side imaging uh settings get the side image dialed in because at uh this next tournament i think finding stuff under the water is going to be very valuable and then i do want to mention uh the weekend the 25th 26th 27th 28th that is the bass cat owners tournament if you own a cat you can go to the bass cat website uh, and you're running out of time to register for that event. So right now the plan is on the 25th, which is a Thursday of April, uh, BTL will be live on location remote doing a full live BTL uh, show from the registration of that Bass Cat Owners Tournament. So excited for that. And check out the Bass Cat website here. I'll... I'll pull that up right there. There it is right there. Bass Cat 2024 Owners Invitational. Boom. April 26th uh, and 27th on Norfolk Lake. So... BTL, we will be there. Looking forward to that. And then uh, after that May event, I think I get the new, the new cat in the garage. So it is, uh, it is in Arkansas there. So, all right, we tried, guys. I don't think this one's going to make it to iTunes. Uh, this will probably live on YouTube. But a big shout out to Travis Manson, Smallmouth Crush. Uh, if you guys are uh, interested in getting up to that Thousand Islands area. Uh, Lake Ontario, any of the smallmouth stuff, him along with uh, JP, uh, Travis knows it, uh, busts his butt to, to, to put guys on fish. Like I said, he's out there uh, pretty much all the time he can be out there. So uh, that is what we're going to do for today, and hopefully we'll have a better signal next time. So uh, cool show tomorrow. He will have a good signal. For the full hour, Tom Brubaker from Strike King and Lose uh, will be on uh, talking all things Strike King and then uh, talking about some cool opportunities uh, that will be announced for the listeners uh, for what they can catch and win through Strike King and Lose, even if you're not in a tournament. So, all right, this has been another edition of BTL. Tomorrow, Tom Brubaker, Strike King Thursday, Uncle Frank returns. Also, guys, uh, we are running out. There's like three days left. It's open through the 14th. Today is the 9th, the BTL merch store. And then also uh, purchase the uh, Bass Fishing Saves Lives St. Jude combo shirt. So, all right, big shout out. Thanks, Travis. Thanks, guys. We'll see everyone tomorrow.